All right, so in this equation, I have x to the power of 4 plus x squared is equal to 20. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is first start by subtracting 20 on both sides so we can have all our terms on one side. So I get x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 20 is equal to 0. Now this may seem like a quadratic equation, but it's not because we have the power of 4 as our primary term, and then that's led by the power of 2. And in a normal quadratic equation, we have 2 as our primary, then we just have 1, and then we have some constant c. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we can't use the, we can't factor this out by using the quadratic formula because this is not a quadratic equation. So to solve this, what I want to do is rewrite this as x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 16 plus 4. So I rewrote, rewrote 20 as 16 plus 4. And the reason I did this is because negative 16 is the same thing as negative 2 to the power of 4. And negative 4 is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So now notice how I have something in the power of 4 and something in the power of 2. And they're both the same. Now I can put the powers of 4s together and the powers of 2 together. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 16 is the same thing as 4 squared as well. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 4 squared, and I have this plus x squared minus 2 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 is the same thing as x to the power of 2 times 2, which is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 4 to the power of 2 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now notice how everything is in the power of 2. Mm -hmm. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to use this property on these two groups. So I first get x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can use this property again on x squared minus 4 by rewriting as x squared minus 2 squared. So that's going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 2. And I have this plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor out x minus 2, so I get x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 plus x plus 2, which is equal to 0. And notice how we can also factor out x plus 2 as well. So actually at the start, what we could have done is just factored x squared minus 4 out. But now we're going to factor out x squared x plus 2 as well. So I get x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So x plus 2 times x minus 2, like I said, was x squared minus 4. And I have this times x squared plus 4 plus 1, which is x squared plus 5. Now this is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And I get x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. So for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 4. And this is equal to positive or negative 2. And for x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. I get x squared is equal to negative 5. And I get x is equal to positive negative square root of negative 5, 
which is equal to positive or negative square root of 5i. All right, so in this equation, I have 1 to the power of x is equal to 3. So this might seem like an impossible equation, right? Because how can 1 be to the power of any number and equal to, th equal to 3 if 1 to the power of even a million is still equal to 1? Well, let's try to solve this equation the way we would solve any other exponential equation. The first thing I would do is take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln 1 to the power of x is equal to ln 3. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this can equal b times ln a. In this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 3. And now if I divide both sides by ln 1, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln 3 over ln 1. Now, if you guys already didn't know, ln 1 is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to ln 3 over 0, and you can't take any number and divide it by 0 because that's undefined, meaning this has no solution. So that method doesn't work. However, this, mean, this just means that there are no real solutions. But there are different types of solutions. So what I'm going to do to solve this equation is, first, let's recall Euler's formula. And if you guys don't know what this is, it states that if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cos of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know this may seem a little complicated right now, but just bear with me. So let's say that theta here is equal to 0. So if theta equals 0, then I get e to the power of i times 0 is equal to cos of 0 plus i times sine of 0. So then I get e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, cos of 0 is 1, plus sine of 0 is 0, and 0 times i is 0. So 1 plus 0. And e to the power of 0 is 1, so I get 1 is equal to 1 plus 0. Now, what if we say that theta is equal to 2k pi? k being a constant, so it could equal any number 1, 2, or 3. So if I plug this in, I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to cos of 2k pi plus i times sine of 2k pi. Now, what if k is equal to 1? What if our constant k is equal to 1? Then I get e to the power of i times 2 pi is equal to cosine of 2 pi plus i times sine of 2 pi. Now, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So I get this is equal to 1. Now, if k is equal to 2, I would get cos of 4 pi plus i of sine 4 pi. Cos of 4 pi is 1, and i times sine of 4 pi is again 0. And if I do the same thing with 3, I would again get 1 plus 0. So this pattern 
continues and it keeps on equaling one no matter what value of k we get. So we can say that e to the power of i times 2k pi, this is equal to one no matter what value of k we have. So now this means that we can substitute this in back to our original equation, which is one to the power of x is equal to three. This is our original equation. And we can substitute in one for e to the power of i times two k pi. So now I get e to the power of i times two k pi to the power of x is equal to three. And this is my new equation. So now to solve this, I'm gonna do what I did at the start. I'm gonna take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I get ln e to the power of i times two k pi to the power of x is equal to ln of three. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so I get b times ln a. In this case, I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln e to the power of i times two k pi is equal to ln three. Now I'm gonna use this property again and move this to the front as well. So I get i times 2k pi times ln e is equal to ln three. And ln e, ln and e, these two cancel out. So now I'm left with i times 2k pi is equal to ln three. Sorry, and I also have x. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by i times 2k pi. So then these cancel out and I get x is equal to ln three over i times 2k pi. Now I'm gonna multiply this by i over i, which is the same thing as one. So I get x is equal to i times ln three over i times i is i squared. And if you guys already know, i squared is equal to negative one. So over negative two k pi. And k in this case can't equal zero because if k over zero, this is wouldn't work. So this is my solution to this equation.